Hello, I've got a piece here by Dylan Murillo. So yeah, let's have a look. What possible good could come from putting Jessup on a stand? He told Kendrick to order the code red. He did? That's great. Why didn't you say so? And of course, you have proof of that. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. You were sick the day they taught law at law school. Okay. I think it's pretty cool, especially like the start. I think it's it's well done. I think in terms of acting, quite like the little eye dot shows a bit of thinking in there. I think that he did should be much more sarcastic. So I think he's kind of here and he's, you know, a bit pissed off with the situation and she says this and I think he should instantly get a lot more sarcastic than he is. So he did. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Because at the moment, I feel like it's a bit too genuine and I feel like the dialogue is, is very sarcastic. So I think he is sarcastic kind of throughout his whole bit. So I think that will help match what you're doing with his body in terms of the very quick, sharp movements. If he kind of stays more in the, the same sort of emotion, I think you can still have a lot of fun with it rather than trying to get in emotional changes that aren't really there in this dialogue. So I think he should, he should be a lot more facetious, if that's the word, here, rather than angry. He's a lot more kind of condescending and, oh, you were sick the day they taught law at law school, weren't you? Hmm. So I feel there it's a little confused. You know, you're, you're kind of trying to get those emotional changes in there that just kind of aren't there. He's, of course, you have proof of that. And then he goes into that getting more, more, more condescending. I read the dialogue more as he's getting himself riled up. So you have proof of that. And then he's the kind of laugh to himself is more of a, oh, God, I'm really, really going to lose it. You have proof of that. What you do? I forgot. Da, 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 da. At the end. So I think I'd I'd go back and really take another pass at shooting reference of this and making sure that the acting is kind of matching the dialogue because I feel like you're trying to put your own ideas in there which aren't matching what the dialogue is saying. So I'd really shoot some reference and really focus on trying to be genuine to the dialogue and getting into the character. So sort of imagining that someone's there and really getting riled up and, oh, you have proof of that. Look at that. Proof of that. What's she doing? You can dream right there. John. Don't scroll. Maybe something more along that. And you don't have to do the dialogue either. Just think about the, the kind of subtext, which I guess is you don't have a clue what you're doing and I am so much more superior than you. Think about that and have that internal monologue going and almost say these things if you like. I know it won't help with lip sync, but I'd have another stab at the shooting reference for that. All right, um, I've just done this entire <laughs> review, but not press record. So let's just go through them, shall we? So with this one, I just thought that you could rotate this hand out a little this way just to get a bit more of a three quarter view. I've also adjusted the hips by rotating them in Z just to get a nicer flow through there. I thought here it would be nice to plant that hand around here because he's kind of using it to then push his weight over to the other side. So it'd be nice if that hand was planted a bit sooner, you know, just bring it straight down to here, get it planted, get this nice kind of straight through here. Here, I thought it'd be nice to stabilize this head a bit more by getting this body over, getting a bit more lean because we're on this shoulder a bit more, I feel, which I can tell because of the chest being like this. So this will give you a bit more of a difference in negative space there. And then again, the same thing with the hips, just lifting those up to counter this weight, probably rotate these up as well. And also rotate this chest down in order to get your head a bit more slumped. I feel like it should be in a bit more of a slumped pose here. And then I think the other note was just having these a little more straight than what you have in here. Either that or what I think would work quite nicely is having these maybe a bit more like this. Ladies. So, you know, it's a bit more kind of laid back and slump 
that could be cool. There we go. So it wasn't a total waste of time re-recording this one. Brilliant. You could get a bit more change in this pose. I think this is quite a big emotional change for him where he is kind of reacting to what she's saying. Um, so I think we could echo that through the body, maybe get the hips up a little more as well. Um, almost get him like starting to stand up and especially if he's down in this, you know, slump pose, chilled out, a bit more of a reversal in the spine and the shape change. And then I thought here to maybe just solve a bit of this twinning um, that you have going on, it would be nice to kind of get this starting to go over to that side. So really leaning on this hand and having this hand continue to be planted on this surface, but then coming away with this hand before that, which will kind of give you a, a natural offset, which you can then use to, to just break up that twinning, you know, and this pose could be a little more broken up. Um, I think you could play with a lean a bit more because he's got this shape going through here. I think it could be nice to have this shape going through here, but then having the nice sarcastic S shape through the head would be quite nice. And then I think through here, what I was talking about is just the concept of not having this straight line in the body because when it's in silhouette, it will kind of just look like it's going from this to this, just up and down, up and down. So you really want to get that clear shape change in the silhouette, whether it's leading with the elbow like that or, you know, having it the other way. So we get this sort of clear lines on the edge there. That shape change in the body can help to break up the twinning of a pose a bit more. So you can have his arm down there, but then this one where you've got that nice C shape in the body, but still having the arm kind of slumped, well, that gives you a bit of negative space here. Whereas on this side, we don't really have any negative space. Here, again, just, just pushing that C shape really. And I also drew this here, thought that could maybe be a bit nicer. And then here, I wanted to discuss how, though we're trying to break up the shapes of the body and stuff, I do feel like balance is still important. So in here, our attention is really being drawn here when he makes this gesture. So it's almost like he's going to be imagining a kind of crystal ball in here. Not focusing 100% on this negative space, but kind of cleaning things up a bit more so it's a bit more balanced into something a bit more like this. So this hand is fairly similar to what you have now. And then this one on the other side is, you know, kind of balanced, but it's not twinned because if we're looking at this pose, the, the C shape of the spine is, is kind of creating a, a difference in these angles and shapes and silhouettes that we have here. So this is very different to the other side, but somehow the pose still feels quite balanced. And then I was just mentioning how for most of your eye shapes, they're looking a little oval right now. Um, I just try and avoid that and favor one lid one way or the other, you know, really try and get these straight lids. It'll be a lot more appealing. And again here, I think it's just the recurring note where just making sure that we have these nice angles through the, through the hip. So that angle versus that angle, always countering them. It's a huge line. And I was just discussing the concept of the S shape here and how we don't want that. And that's kind of what's created here by having this hip be straight. I'm reading this as being this kind of shape into this, into this. So boom, boom, boom. Whereas really we'd want more of a counter and that which will give us a nicer shape rather than being a little broken shape of the torso, getting these hips up, getting them over, just to really shape through. And then here I think is one of the one of the first notes I gave, which was just getting a little more curve through his face. So, you know, getting this mouth a little more like that, making sure that we're opening up one side of the face and getting this V shape, you know, not as drastic as, as this, but somewhat like that. Focusing on the head space here. So if we look at the space of here, over to here, we're bringing this whole body over, um, countering the hips with the chest. And we're also getting this head over here. So it's win, win, win really, because this head space is a lot more stable. It's a lot more readable, but also the body mechanics will be feeling a lot nicer with the shape change that we're creating. Okay, so here, this was more of a, an overall note. So I noticed that, let me turn these lines off. Notice that through a lot of the movements that you were doing, you were kind of having the same formula to them. So doing this pose into antic, into overshoot, into settle. So antic, overshoot, settle, antic, overshoot, settle, which I do like. I, I do like this mo movement. I really think it sells the sarcastic attitude that I think you really want him to have. But then, you know, through all of here, I, I feel the same antic, overshoot, settle, antic, 
overshoot settle. So I really thought that you could break this up by this is what you have right now if we're looking at just the yellow. So it kind of just overshoots down and then settles back up. So what I've drawn in the pink is what you could do. So without the drawings on it, this could be your overshoot instead. And maybe not as twinned as this, but just for clarity's sake, you know, and then we could ease up into what you have. So going from a pose here with the hand to a pose here with a hand. So the overshoot is still happening in the translate Y, still happening here. But then if you look at this axis, this axis, then we're easing to this point. So you're getting overshoot ease rather than just overshoot ease, overshoot. And, you know, it, it feels like you're just going past the pose and coming straight back into it rather than having those arcs in there, which will make it feel a lot more organic and less twinned. How we could go, we could overshoot up here into this. So you're still overshooting one axis of it and then settling down to this. And I guess the last point I wanted to make here was just really reiterating that point of having those curves through the spine, which will help your headspace. So just trying to bring these over here so that if we look at these, they're a lot more controlled and not moving as much as the poses that you have at the moment. And this is just a combination of moving the body around in the right way, creating those shapes through the body, which gives you contrast, which gives you correct body mechanics, and also really controls that headspace. I hope I pressed record because I don't want to do this for a third time. And yeah, I hope that helped. This is definitely the longest review I've done so far. So yeah, thanks very much for submitting. Bye.